Hey, Tribe, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we have Beck with us today, who is passionate about, about local politics and standing up for nurses. So she's going to educate us as to how we can stand up for ourselves as nurses in community. Um, so let's welcome her. Hi, Beck. Hi. How are you today? I'm, I'm great. I'm a little tired, but um, <clears throat> I'm doing very well. Thank you. Good. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us about something that's so important to so many of us, but yet so many of us are so clueless, uh, including myself. So let's just get in um, directly to our hot topic for the day. Tell us how you got involved in political action. Um, well, it first started with a um, very local city um, action, uh, trying to prevent uh, uh, um, trying to prevent a special assessment district, which in short terms is basically the city says, we wanna do these infrastructure changes. Uh, it's gonna cost over $2 million and all your neighbors have to pay another 20 grand on their mortgages. Um, we went uh, door to door, most of them didn't know about it. So we got a lot of them involved as well, getting that shot down because it wasn't good for the neighborhood. They had wanted to pave the roads and then tear them up later and put in sewage. And that's sort of a waste of money. So it's all started there. Um, okay. I have to thank my husband for that. Um, and then I moved on to animal welfare, specifically equine, because I ride horses and have since I was practically born. Um, we have a lot of issues in the state of New Mexico, at least, and I know now countrywide about, um, it's a very, very hot and uh, debated topic, so I won't really get into it. Um, but I learned very slowly how to connect with government, how to connect with um, like-minded people and lawyers and lobbyists, and um, you know how to how do how do I approach these people? How do I get my message across and be taken seriously? Mm -hmm. And now, um, you know, when I can, I. Um, you know, I try to connect with my politicians and keep in touch with my lawyer friends. When something comes up like this news story, I immediately, uh, you know, group group message to my lawyer friends and said, hey, <laughs> what's going on here? Um, because it's important to me as a nurse and to my colleagues. Um, you know, I, I want my colleagues to be safe. I want to be safe. And I also want my patients to be treated well. Yeah. Um, humanity is a big big thing for me. Um, at one point, I was a, a county delegate for my Democratic Party. Okay. Um, so I went to State Central. I helped choose who goes on the ballot for our party, um, which is kind of a big deal. Um, and it's a lot of headache. You know, you don't have to do that, go that far to get involved. Um, mm -hmm. because There's a lot of people that will especially uh, they're ageist a little bit. They'll talk over you. They won't take you seriously, things like that. So sometimes it's better to go it on your own um, and just get guidance from your friends, uh, people with experience, things like that. So do you have any specific experience with healthcare bills or policies? I don't actually, this would be my first experience with this. Okay. Um, I mostly just have experience with um, trying to learn about bills when they're passed or when they're in session and they're looking at them, where they're going. You know, they start at the House of Representatives. If they pass it, it goes to the Senate. Um, if the Senate passes it at that point, you know, for nationwide, the president has the option to veto. Um, mm -hmm. I could have this a little out of line, but this is kind of basically the steps. And then it has to be... Um, has to go through the judiciary system in order to be ratified. So um, you, some of you may be old enough to remember the schoolhouse rocks and I'm just a bill and all that fun stuff. Um, on a state level, that's very similar, um, but you can, you don't have to go to Washington DC and on mm -hmm. the state level, you can go to the roundhouse in New Mexico, or you can go to your, whatever your local, um, House and Senate offices are, um, make an appointment to, to talk to your, uh, who represents you. You're a constituent and you have a voice in this. So writing them letters, emails, um, letters are more effective. Sometimes emails get ignored. Um, Tom Udall's office always sends a very polite re reply letter saying, we received your information, thanks so much. Um, and others, will engage you. So you have to give them the opportunity. You have to 
put your foot out there and, and make your best go at it and, and do it in a way that is rational, not attacking. Um, and you know, in plain language, you know, just state what it is that you think is wrong with what's going on and what you think is a solution or many solutions. You know, politicians aren't healthcare workers. They're not in the hospital. They don't know what it's like. It's important for us to offer them solutions. Even if it may seem ridiculous, you may think, oh, well, they might think this is ridiculous, but actually this would really work for us. Um, go through your shared governance. You know, talk to those folks. Um, see what they think about your ideas. Bounce your ideas off of people. Shared governance at your hospital? Yes. Okay. Um, so how do we stay in the loop as to what policies are going on and what bills are or are in the Senate? How, how do we get that information? Sorry, I have allergies. You're good. Um, a lot of times I spot it in the news, even though I'm actually not a person who watches the news. Mm -hmm. uh, I get it from friends. I get it from, um, from um, one of the links that'll be posted is, um, I think it's votesmart.org. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to see what's going on in uh, your local area or nationally, um, that's a good place to go. Say so list everything. It doesn't matter who you're affiliated with, you're not affiliated. Um, it, it's all about presenting facts for people in order for them to make decisions and take action. Um, other places, um, are probably your your local government offices. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's uh, they're they're obliged to provide you with information on what's going on. Um, they have websites nowadays. They have you know the governor's office. They have uh, state uh, representatives and senators have websites. Um, mm -hmm. So go looking for it. It's out there. Um, you know, you might join um, a broadcast email where you get emails regularly with updates as to uh, related to healthcare. Um, those are some ways that you can you can stay latched in, if you will. Good input, thank you. So, mm -hmm. in terms of you referenced the bill, uh, you recent. I'm just going to go into like the bill that you actually brought up to the, in the Tribar Inc. group. Um, you said in New Mexico, state lawmakers want to know if the law meant to protect healthcare workers from physical attacks actually hurting some patients. It's a felony to attack a doctor, nurse, or other healthcare provider. Some lawmakers feel that this is discouraging those who seek care, those who are mentally ill, or most most specifically is kind of what I, the way that I took it from seeking treatment. Am I understanding this bill correctly? Yes. What this so what the care QE article talks about is a uh, bill for a memorandum um, on, it's basically creating a bill saying, we're gonna spend $300 to study um, if this is, if, if felonizing uh, people who attack healthcare workers is effective. Um, we wanna know, because as I stated, you know, in um, at some point before, um, in New Mexico and other states too. Look up your state, look up the three strikes law. If you have three felonies on your record, you can go to prison for life. That's a big deal. Doesn't matter where the other felonies took place. And you know, if it, it, some things, some strange things are felonies and it could be something that, you know, doesn't really uh, benefit humanity or your community. Um, so, this bill um, that these two Democratic senators are <clears throat> trying to enact is basically a study. They want to they want to collect data. This is a great time for us to say, here's some data. Here's word from your nurses yeah. um, and doctors, and involve other people too. You know, uh, PT, OT, speech, everybody, because they all interact with our patients. Um, you know, as far as the original, uh, the current bill that is in place is HB 0346, which is House Bill. That's what that stands for. And then they give it a number. Okay. That was enacted in 2017, which created the felony law. Mm -hmm. So that's the one they're looking to see if they need to overturn or not. Um, and I've, I've 
provided that link as well. So you can read the full bill and it's really confusing and unpleasant uh, wordage. Um, but it basically says, um, what it's basically focusing on is mentally ill people assaulting healthcare workers and getting a felony for it. Okay. And if you are uh, mental, if you have a mental illness or disability, um, you know, there, you, um, and you attack a, a healthcare provider, you're, you're, and you, you get a felony, you go to jail, you get out and you're like, I'm not going back there because, you know, in my mind, they put me in jail because I came for help. So what we need to do as nurses is come up with ideas. Um, you know, we closed all those estate institutions a long time ago because they were horrible conditions. They treated patients terribly. They're, they're horror stories from those places. So we, we all know that. But we never, we never wanted to look back and say, well, what did we do wrong and what can we do right? What can we put in place that will, instead of that, that will provide these people with the care and um, and help that they deserve. They're human beings, just like us. Um, you know, they they weren't born to be sick. Um, they just they just are. So um, that's really what what I really want people to think about is positive action. What can we do that will actually help them? and keep us safe. Right. Um, that's just really important. Yeah, you mentioned a little bit about the funding of this and that, um, so you mentioned that it was the law that leads to felony conviction and the mentally ill people was mutually funded by the private prison sector. Um, can you elaborate on that and the importance of that piece of information? Yes, so, okay. um, my friend who's an attorney, um, has been an attorney for a long time. He is a, an executive uh, policymaker on the board for, I believe, mental illness and disabled, uh, developmentally disabled people. Um, I'll be a little personal. I won't give out his name, but I'll say his, he has a, a, a young daughter who's severely autistic. So he is very active in that community. Um, and so he has gotten himself a good position on the board um, and has gotten a great deal of information. Um, the 2017 bill was backed by several different special interest groups, but the one that struck me as the most um, disgusting, honestly, was that private prisons um, were giving money towards this campaign to have that bill put in place. And we all know the reason for that. They want to profit from having those prisoners. Um, and that's a tough one. I mean, you know, that that's kind of like having, um, uh, you know, I'm trying to think conflict of interest. You know, it's it's really scary, but they can do that. I mean, anyone can give money to any uh, campaign or action. And um, if they have enough of it, they usually get their way. So that's kind of how our government functions these days. And we need more voices to out there to counteract that. We need a lot of voices to counteract that kind of money. That yeah. ends a lot. So a question that came in through the event posted in the tribe was from Frida and she said, what can we do to see that patients actually are prosecuted or even charges pressed? So many are declared incompetent. This is true and I've seen this happen. Um, I've seen it happen to four nurses. Uh, they were terrified, they were injured. Mm -hmm. um, the patient did, uh, they were, the charges were dropped because she was found to be incompetent. Um, Judges normally are, and, and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings by saying this, but most judges are usually a good, uh, a good method of, of judging whether this is appropriate or not. Okay. Um, sometimes it's because the, uh, the plaintiffs don't show up to court. I guess they're working, um, but they should, I think they should have, I'm not sure about the details, but I think they should be provided uh, a day to do that, um, just like voting and things like that. Um, but also, 
you know, we need a step program. We need something that's less severe and more helpful. Um, you know, people get angry when they get assaulted. I know when I get hit by something, I haven't been hit by anybody enough to make me mad, but I was hit once in the face of the softball and that really hurt and I got very mad. Um, and so I can understand people feeling like they want justice for what's happened to them. They want comp they may want compensation. Um, you know, those things all go through the courts, but um, and that's why we need to figure out better ways to, to treat these people. How, how do we get them help? How do we correct what, what has happened? Mm -hmm. um, and how do we compensate nurses for, for dealing with this? I mean, you get assaulted and you get your nose broken or your arm broken or you're pregnant and you get punched in the stomach. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, I know a lot of pregnant nurses, they've all gone on maternity leave, but, um, you know, we need to find out what, what can we do? Yeah. Those are not things I have answers to myself um, okay. as one nurse. But I think as a nation of nurses and as a nation of a profession that has been the most trusted profession for 18 years, um, except for 2011, um, we should we should be able to speak out and say, here's what we want. You know, whether whether maybe a majority of nurses want the felonies. OK, well, that majority spoke. Um, but, you know. Maybe a majority want more healthcare facilities that are focused on mental illness. I told my boss once, I said, I did not sign up to be a psych nurse, mm -hmm. but here I am. And I, I deal with it a lot with substance abuse, with um, withdrawals and, and with folks who come in with mental illnesses and comorbidities. So, you know, Michelle Lujan Grisham, who is now the governor for New Mexico, um, there are a lot of things on her agenda. She has a, got a very aggressive agenda and she would like to see it through. So she's another person to hit up and she's very accessible. I run into her a lot. She knows me by face. Um, probably not my first name, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but she is someone, she, she wants to hear from people. Um, so New Mexico, get out there and talk to her. She, her one of her agenda items is addressing this issue. Um, addressing the lack of mental health care in our state. And, and I'm sure it happens in other states too. And I'm hoping you, you have governors and politicians who want to do the same. So there's a lot of viewers on right now. And I just want you guys um, in the comments, let me know, let us know when, when you're out and um, violence happened, uh, I, as, as a floor nurse was never instructed on how to proceed. There was never any like, okay, if this happens, then you do this. Are you supported in your efforts to report? Granted, I worked in the pediatric ICU, so that wasn't something that I dealt with a lot. There was, of course, teenagers coming off highs that would get violent. But I feel like at that point, your mindset as the care provider is a little different. But anyways, that's beside the point. My question to you guys as viewers is, are you supported in your efforts to report or to stand up for yourself? How do you handle that? And you said you never personally uh, have experienced violence at work. Is that what I understood? Yeah, most of the violence I've experienced has been um, really small. I, okay. I'm not injured, but it's been, you know, I've, had, I've called security and had them come and, and be there because someone, you know, we need to recognize the cues and the symbols. In fact, what it really boils down to, I think, is as part of a nursing curriculum, maybe at a bachelor level, maybe really at the associate level, we need we need some uh, we need some training uh, on how to de-escalate, on how to handle these folks because security gets training. Um, I know my husband's a high school teacher; he gets training. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a term for it. It's like CBI or something. And I don't know what it stands for, but um, you know, it's basically handling behavioral health situations and deescalating uh, aggressive people and keep your eyes open for those cues. Are they swearing? Are they using aggressive body language? Are they glaring at you? Um, things like that, you, that, that sort of makes you go, 
hmm, I don't know if I really, I want to turn my back on this person or get in the other side of the room while they're in here. So those are things you can do right away um, yeah. that, that can help. But, you know, talk to your, um, talk to your man nurse managers, talk to, to shared governance, maybe, you know, a budget can be made for, for specific training and dealing with, with violent patients. That's good input. Um, Jesse says that they are told to call security and um, Anthony and Marcy, I'm not sure who that is that's talking, but anyways, they say they appreciate you for speaking up nurses. So, oh, um, so let's see, um, make it a part of a CE, someone suggests. Yeah, I agree. That would be great, um, Jesse. Good input. Uh, so let's see. How do we as nurses and nursing students speak up to ensure that our safety is priority? I think you kind of address that in that we go to our management and say, I need training. I need a plan. What are we doing here? Um, and I, honestly, I feel like making sure that we feel supported and doing what we need to do. I wonder what those nurses that say, uh, you know, I'm going to press charges, how they're supported by management. Do you know by chance? No, because I think it falls outside of the facility's jurisdiction. Yeah. It's between the nurse, um, you know, it's between the plaintiff, defendant, and the judge at that point. In fact, I'm pretty sure that most risk management departments want nothing to do with that situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, they'll support you, you know, while you're there, if the action happens, you know, but beyond that, I'm pretty sure you're, you're, you may be on your own. And it may vary by state by state. There may be some mandates um, that, you know, organizations need to participate in that. that but um, as far as I know, I, I've never heard of anything. So yeah, that's kind of scary if you think about it. I mean, we live at hospitals, you know, especially right. our our 12 hour shifters. It feels like we live there anyways. <laughs> so um, that that's a really, that's a really good question. Yeah. And, you know, I really hope, my hope is that um, those of you tuning in, that you feel empowered to go talk to your management, go talk to your senators, go talk to those who are making the laws and standing up for you. Like let your voice be heard, let them know you're concerned. Um, let them know where your stance is so that they can gather that information. Because if we all sit around silent, nobody hears us. No one knows. Yeah, I think I was actually, I may have been sort of recruited by Silent No More um, through Facebook. Because mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's politics in general these days. Yeah, There's so many things going on. And I know, you know, when I first, before, before my, my, you know, neighborhood housing issue. I wanted nothing to do with politics. It was confusing. I didn't know where to start. There were so many issues that I went, hmm, okay, that's cool. Or no, no, I don't like that at all. That That's dehumanizing and bad. Um, so what I did was, you know, I focused on something that I cared about. Yeah. And, and that's what you need to do. You need to find what do you really care about? You know, do you, are you in peds? Do you care about how children are treated or, are you in? Uh, are you in mental health? Do you have experience? Can you reach out to other nurses and give them tips, you know, and and share information with them on, on how to de-escalate or how to? And I know you had recently had one. Um, I can't remember her name, but you did a with a psych nurse, and that was mm -hmm. great because right, she talked about many things that I I wondered about. So, um, you know, we need to network. Um, and that's a, it's a dirty word. Uh, I think some people think it's a dirty word. Um, but you know, you'll, if you, even if you, if you, you find your affiliate party, whichever, whatever way you vote, or if you don't vote at all, which is really a bad thing, but please vote. Um, but, um, find people to go talk to, go to both, you know, you want to see both sides of the story. What, what is their argument against this or for this? Um, you don't have time for that. That's cool. You don't have the energy. That's cool. I, I've been there. Um, just, you know, write down, even if you spend three hours a year writing a letter saying, um, you know, depending on what part of year it is and if they're in session, if they're not in session, I can tell you that when they're in session, things are hot. They're trying to get stuff done. They have a timeline to meet. 
Um, they're not very accessible. The only reason I was able to reach out to my attorney friend was because he had the flu. So <laughs> he was home. <laughs> and There's he's convenience you know, about that. <laughs> yeah. But he's back in session this week. I guarantee you he's got all the all the drugs on board and he's, you know, they're lobbying for for the causes that he works for. Um, yeah. So sometimes it's better to reach out in between session which is a good, that would be good this time because uh, for New Mexico, at least, the session ends on February 20th. Uh, so after February 20th, they all kind of go on vacation, but they have people, they have teams that work for them, especially senators and uh, house representatives. It's not just them by themselves. I went to meet with Tom Udall and I didn't see him at all. I spoke to his administration who actually took me really seriously and then even addressed other issues that I brought up that I didn't even think were important because they were about me. Okay. Um, so, you know, make appointments to go see these folks um, there in your city, um, in your uh, neighborhoods. They, you know, they're humans like us. Yeah. Reach out to them. And join your state board of nursing. Like if you're on their newsletter, make sure you're you're attending uh, to those events that are there. Uh, if you don't want to physically attend, read through the email. They they always give information on what's hot, right? Because it's pa they're passionate about it, and they want to make sure that you as nurses are being heard. And there's so many of people at your board of nursing, whatever state you're in, um, that are standing there wanting to hear from you and. Um, they're doing what they're passionate about, so make sure that your voice is being heard. Yeah, I mean, look up, look up the board and look up their names. Find the board's address. That's all yep. you gotta do. Put their name on the top. You know, for sure. To them. That means somebody else opens that unless they're, you know, allowed to. Yeah, that's a that's a uh, breaking the law. There, you can't open somebody else's mail, so they have to have yeah. the name read it. Um, so yeah, definitely Board of Nursing, um, any other nursing organizations. If you have a um, a union, you know, mm -hmm. up to your union. what are we what are we supposed to do when this happens? Um, I didn't find my union very useful, but some people have great unions. Yeah. So especially for those who are listening nationwide, if you are part of a union or even if you're not part of a union, a lot of times the law says that um, they still have to help represent you, even if you're not paying dues. That was true in New Mexico. So, um, you know, those are the things that people don't know a lot about. Um, mm -hmm. I've also included a citizen's guide to lobbying. Um, and, um, you know, that and the, and the Vote Smart initiative are excellent resources. Especially, you know, I also want to sort of plug Vote Smart for when you're getting ready to vote, whether it be municipal, which is local, um, statewide or, or nationwide. Uh, you can type in a person's name that's on a ballot and see what their voting initiatives are. Mm -hmm. Did they take action? Do they vote at all? I mean, are they just sitting in the chair getting paid? You know, mm -hmm. it's important to know these things. And those are those are the people you want to avoid. Um, but you yeah. want to see the people who do vote. And what do they vote on in majority? Are they like all about, you know, gun freedom? Or are they all about um, health care? Are they all about um, schools and education? You can you can see trends and know who you can hit up for um, for voicing your opinion. OK, that's good to know. Um, I will post, she keeps referencing these links and stuff like that. I'm gonna post those in the notes um, whenever we publish this. So as soon as we go offline, I will get all of those notes and links that she's referencing um, available to you guys. So um, anything, any last pearls to add back before we go off? I don't see any questions here that are pending. Nope, I think we've covered everything. Do you have anything that you wanna add? I just, I just want people to keep their passion. Um, you know, and, and and I like I love the tribe. I want to thank you so much, um, Chelsea, for having this and for taking the time to, to do these go lives and, and podcasts and everything, because it's so important that we band together on this. Um, you know, it takes it, they used to say things like it, it takes a, a village to raise a child. It's right. going to take a village to. Uh, to get some some uh, actions done um, and and protect us, protect our patients, Absolutely. because in the end, that's what, what that's why we did this. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's cool. So. Well, thank you, Beck, and thank you for tuning in, Tribe. I appreciate you guys more than you'll ever know. Have a great day. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Take care.